you're about to discover intricacies of keeping high acceptance rates on Uber Eats that's going to increase your earnings and return valuable time. I think you'll also be happier in life afterwards. Something happened this last month that really annoyed me, prompting this helpful information for your benefit. I'm going to tell you about that as well as briefly share background on slowly increasing my acceptance rate. I'm going to share the challenges of maintaining a 100% acceptance rate and wrap up with the one and only thing that is a positive for maintaining a 100% acceptance rate on Uber Eats. Hello and welcome. My name is Russ and I've done gig work part-time since late 2018. This means that based on my experience, you can benefit without having to learn the same hard lessons. After almost six months of steadily maintaining a 100% acceptance rate on Uber Eats, I suddenly show that I'm at 99%. You can see here from this chart that something did happen on July 13th. I really don't recall missing an order. Maybe I had restarted my phone. I don't know. I do know from experience that it takes far more orders than you would ever expect to raise your acceptance rate. So I'm diligently and carefully monitoring anytime on Uber Eats. Let's cover those facts in just mere seconds. It takes a few orders to raise your acceptance rate 1% when you have a very low acceptance rate. As you get closer to 100%, it steadily starts increasing, which makes no sense. When I started, it was at 58% and it took four orders per percentage increase. When I was at 97%, it took five orders. Once I hit 99%, it took six orders. And to get to 100%, it took seven orders per percent. This is truly ridiculous and shows that Uber Eats is not using simple math. Instead, Uber Eats is manipulating drivers. I experience a measure of fear when I'm out working for Uber Eats at a high acceptance rate. I am happy and carefree when working on the other apps. Now, why would that be? Let's explore the challenges of maintaining a high acceptance rate. The most frustrating thing is that I feel compelled to get off that app an hour before I must stop working. Uber Eats may send me on a long distance delivery, and I mean a very long distance. I have seen some ridiculous 40 mile trips to areas many cities over. I shudder to think how long that would take me to get back home with all that traffic. Turning off the app an hour before gives me time to return. This means that by turning off the app an hour early, I'm missing out on potential earnings. This is a big deal, feeling compelled to turn down income. Another challenge is that I may have long distance deliveries. This means more vehicle expenses in the form of wear and tear and fuel. There are many strange orders that come your way, where in the offer you can see that you're gonna lose money by taking that trip. Another challenge is the drop-off location for a long distance delivery. It may not be in an area where I can get more orders, and this compels me to drive further to find more orders. Another challenge is that the restaurant location and or drop-off locations may not be in a safe neighborhood. This means increased risk to my personal safety, life, and property. Another challenge is that I'm now choosing all types of orders to include traditional restaurant food delivery, package delivery, or grocery shopping. Now, there are times that I don't want to be in a store. Yes, you can turn off the shop and pay orders in the app. Consider this when you maintain a high acceptance rate. Another challenge, and also very annoying, is that I must pay close attention to the app at all times. I might miss an order. I got pretty good at it for 18 months as I was doing the 100% acceptance rate experiment, but I was doing good at it until I wasn't on July 13th. This has ruined so much potential proof in the earnings that I've had to start over now. Do you know that based on previous results, I should already be back at 100%. Since July 13th, I've already done 16 orders and I'm still at 99%. That's more orders than seven. So the frustration is real. If you don't pay careful attention, then it's easy to get set back and exceedingly hard to get to 100%. You know, it's like Uber Eats manipulates drivers by keeping us on a hamster wheel, working and working forever with no better days ahead. Although maybe not obvious, the most important challenge is that I'm submitting to Uber Eats as an employee and giving up my independent contractor status. I'm doing everything that our benevolent app tells me to do without question or thought. It would be one thing if Uber Eats truly values drivers and pays us fairly at all times. I would happily take all orders if they paid well. 
I actually wouldn't care about tips as tips should be for great service. As you know, tips are part of our overall and necessary pay because Uber Eats chooses to pay us such low wages. There is no utopia where life is fair. Additionally, there's an opportunity cost by accepting every Uber Eats order. I am missing out on potential better orders on other apps. You will never know this for sure, which is why you're missing the opportunity to make more on other apps. This is called multi-apping, having all the apps on and then choosing the best offer and then turning off the other apps until it's time to find that next order. There is one and only one positive for taking every order on Uber Eats. If you do this, Uber Eats is gonna show you hidden tips over $8. I noticed this recently and have the proof that I was receiving fully transparent orders. Uber Eats was not hiding tips. Since being back at 99%, I've noticed that those orders are now back how they have always been. I took a Taco Bell order recently and the trip request came in at 11.03. I earned a base pay of $303, so that means the tip was $8. Or was it more than $8? Yes, the tip came in at $18. It's no wonder that the father exclaimed that this was the most expensive Taco Bell order ever, but happy kids and happy wife are worth it. You have to use a computer to access what the customer paid as Uber Eats has purposefully removed this from the app. It's no wonder the father was upset. Uber Eats charged him a $17.51 service fee for a Taco Bell order going about three miles. I received $3.08 from that $17.51, so Uber Eats earned $14.43 for the pleasure of using their app. There were five drinks and nachos, nachos fries, two tacos, and maybe something else. Overall, the customer paid $38.89, excluding for the actual price of the food and drinks. Yes, the customer was exceedingly gracious to give me an $18 tip, and I really appreciate it. Keep in mind that Uber Eats also charges the restaurant a 30% fee for using the app, and you know that restaurants pass these costs on to the customer. Oh, this is brutal and getting onto another topic altogether. So briefly returning to this topic, what's the one important area that I did not address concerning maintaining a high acceptance rate on Uber Eats? Earnings. You'd rightly assume that you should make more when you're demonstrating your loyalty to Uber Eats by taking every order. Is that true? Find out here when you watch this video next.